Hi, and welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. It's very exciting. Ba, ba, ba. I need fireworks in the background. I don't know why. <laughs> so like and subscribe and um, tell your friends. Um, I hope you enjoy this video series. We're in the lower 40s numbers, 43, I think this is 43, 44, something around there of episodes. And we are working on Spiky Veiny Man today. And so we have used glue. It's been this multi-grip that I did the veins on underneath. And then I, so I did that directly onto the head. Oh, the head, let's start at the beginning. So the head was bronze paint, flex stone, fleck stone, flex stone to paint that was like, kind of goes and it has all these little globules. And then I went over with the bronze paint to sort of stabilize it because the flex stone will just melt quite literally. Like you get a little water and it just goes um, And then over top of that, I started with the face and the black just to outline certain sections, added the, see how it's raised a little bit. Let's pull him off. You can see, see how it's textured. Oh, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Yeah, look at that texture. So it's raised a little bit. Um, I used the clear, the clear multi-grip glue because it's nice and, and thick um, and I can draw with it onto it. I've actually, I started doing it on birdhouses and oddly enough, so it'd have multiple colors. So then I went over that with the red and during it, the process of being creative and being in the moment, I took these guys, um, what is it called? Poly, poly foam caulk saver. So it's these things that you put in gaps. Uh, it's insulation. And yes, I do have bags and bags of it because I don't know if you can see, now you can't see them but I've done masks with them before. They create this really weird effect. Snip, 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 cut them at different lengths, glue them on. So one blunt end, one angled end, glue them onto there using the um, multi-grip uh, because I know it won't eat through it and it'll hold it, not hot glue. Why not hot glue? Because hot glue melts because hot glue is only effective when it's not hot. <laughs> Whoa, I know, concept. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm going through and painting the bases. I'm using this American multi-surface, Americana paint. It's multi-surface satin, fin uh, coffee bean, satin finish, coffee bean is the name of the color. It's very chunky and gross because it's really old, uh, but I don't really care because it's going where? Outside! That's right. So this is all going to get a clear coat of, um the rubberizing coating, the clear rubberizing coating. And that's called flex something, flex seal. And so that does the final seal on it at the very end. So I don't really care if it's acrylic. I mean, acrylic doesn't come off in water, but it will eventually um, just, if it gets warm and it's hot and it's wet, it will just remove itself and just separate from it. So I'm taking the paint, loading up my brush, dragging the paint up the spine or whatever these things are that we're calling them, the follicle out to the end. Not spending too much attention at the ends. They don't need to be completely covered at the ends, but I do want to get them pretty consistently painted. I don't need it not streaky. Don't care about not streaky. Streaky is fine. Just covered to keep, cover that gray doesn't need to be like a solid coverage of the gray um, because it, I kind of like the effect of being able to see a little bit from underneath. I'm also going to be using multiple colors of paint on top of this. This is not the final color that it's going to be. So, and I'm not taking short strokes. I'm doing a lot of knots, but I am taking long strokes and applying it generously on these guys. Now, if I can't see the bottoms of them, I am not going to worry about it. That's another knot. Oh, I'm very full of knots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just move on to the next ones and turn it later. I will deal with, yes, very good. 
So like the bottom ones here, I am going to just do the top because I will deal with the bottoms or undersides when I'm able to trim the whole thing and get it a different angle. Do -do 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 -do, staying with that darker brown for now. Now what I'm going to do is this section, I'll get most of these done and then I'll start playing with other color. But let's just do this section for now because I can see I'm trying to come back to it and replicate it doesn't really need to be like perfect because it's going outside. Let me go load up the brush and I'm using the acrylic paint because it actually sticks nicely to this stuff. Um, I've mentioned in the past that using this foam, the poly foam, when you use spray paint on it, it sticks beautifully at first, but as soon as it dries, it becomes completely unflexible or non-flexible, whatever, whatever words you want to actually use for that, but it becomes rigid and very, um, very much unable to bend without breaking. It cracks. Um, found that out while doing the masks. And the effect was pretty freaking cool, actually, because I used bronze and silver and gold and a bunch of different colors and hammered metal finish and things like this for the spray paints on the quills or the, the foam. And they... Um, each time that I would do it, I would turn it around and be like, crack, 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 snap, 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 crack, crack, crack. And <laughs> I was like, no, I'm losing all my paint. And it would literally just be floating away on the air, on the air currents, because I was doing it outside. And I was like, oh, what is going on? And then I brought it inside and I realized the silver or this gray, silvery gray of the foam itself was showing through. And I ended up really enjoying it. I was like, okay, so not planned, but I like the lucky. So now I'm taking this, getting the bottoms where I can, where I may have missed or not been able to see. There we go. Like I said, there we go. Just working my way in this section. And then the next section, like I said, like I said, like I said, uh, <laughs> uh, too much caffeine. Well, it's not too much, just enough. Um, will make me a little wacky. So I am going to move on to the next section after I play with this one, which is what I was getting to. And just one more. Do, do, do. This one. There. All right. I've got enough of them done to the point where I can start playing with other colors. So I also have on my thing, I'm gonna take the same brush. I don't need to switch out brushes, I'm fine. Brown sugar. So the brown sugar is actually a nice consistency. I'm gonna put that from midway and go down. And I am not gonna put that on really heavy. I'm going to, ooh, I'm gonna splatter it all over my good shirt. Um, but I am going to go from about mid to midway toward the end and drag that paint out to the end and blend it a little bit on the midway. Now, remember this is I'm gonna be outside, sort of the mantra, right? To keep, you, keep me from obsessing over it. It needs to be perfect. Everyone needs to be exactly right. It needs to be perfectly blended, blah, 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 blah. No, I just want it to lighten as it comes out. The amount of paint I put on it. Hey, there we go. We'll determine that. And so when you, because it's going to be an overall look, there will be a couple other colors. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't have to, I don't want to necessarily hard line, but I do, I'm going to put it back on. Actually, I'm going to continue with the lower ones first. Since I've got it in this position, I should use this position to my advantage. There we go. Looky there. Wonderful. Yeah, this is a good good angle to be able to get the underside of these. And I'm starting at different places on each one because it's more of an ombre, ombre effect um, where I want it to lighten as it comes up. 
and then we'll add, like I said, like I said, why am I saying that so much? Good Lord. Uh, the different colors to them as we go. I'm going to put it back on my stand here. Oh, right. I missed the whole section. Come on, little guy. There you are. There. All right. Let's try the top sides of these with this. What is it called? Desert sand? Brown sugar. Sorry, that's brown sugar. I don't know where I got desert sand. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Go, oops, oops. You gotta be able to see around, my guy. There we go. And beautiful. It's coming on nice and randomly. This is fun. It works beautifully. Blend up just only a little bit. Working wet on wet is excellent because you get. You can blend very, very easily, very quickly uh, with just the stroke of a brush and you're good to go. There. So that's that. That's kind of cool. I like it. Now, what color should I go to? How about orange? Or should I go directly into yellow? Let's go directly to yellow. Oh, this is the really light. Mm, I don't like this yellow. This yellow is so thin. I do not like that yellow. We're not doing that. We're going to go instead, should you go metallic? Let's go metallic. Huzzah. I'm going to go with bright brass. I don't know how much of this I have left, but we're going to put it over here. Ooh, that's got a nice dollop of it. And I'm going to drag this and clean this brush a little bit. I don't want that much of the old color. I don't need to clean it. No matter how much I want to, I don't need to. I'm going to put this just right at the ends. Oh, that's cool. That works. Right at the end. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to do orange for the insides of the tips. I think I'm going to stick with that idea. I'll turn him. So I get the gold on nice and heavy. It's wet on wet. So I do need to load up my brush heavier in order to be able to leave paint behind and not just make the gold that I'm picking up or that bright bronze, bright bronze, is that what I said? Yeah, bright brass, sorry, bright brass. Uh, not just make it all brown. Nice and thick on the bright brass color. Beautiful, really lay it on there. Lay it on this little guy that's sticking down there. A little short one. So I've got it on the tops where I can see it real well. I didn't get that long one. Okay, bloop, bloop, bloop. There we go. That's better. Nice and heavy so I can really see it. Good. Now I'm going to lay him down gently so I don't crack any of his paint. And I'm going to work on the lower ones. There we go. And the bottom sides of them. You can gloop it right on there. It's a technical term. Gloop it right on. Do, do, do. So I don't remember if I actually told you about my trip to San Francisco. I had never been. It was very fun. I got to do a cable car ride which was awesome we went over to um chinatown on the cable car which is just fascinating and disturbing all at once to me because so i have this thing full confession i have a neurosis i have a a hiccup in my giddy up that and everybody thinks it's weird and i agree and i have very specific reasons for them which i don't need to share but I have major freak out moment if I have to walk over and anybody who's ever walked in a city with me will know this. I have to actually, <clears throat> excuse me, walk on a grate. So this, you know, this is a challenge in cities because grates are everywhere. Now, what do I mean by a grate? I mean literally like any kind of a grate, like a grate on the sidewalk, a grate in the in the street doesn't bother me to drive over them 
uh, it bugs me to um, walk over them. I was, as a paralegal, I did personal injury for a number of years, and one of the cases was a woman who, I mean, I will give you a little background. It makes sense when you, when you hear my story, uh, who stepped on a grate and fell through. Well, only one leg went in. It was actually a water main um, cover, great cover. One leg went through. Well, she was just walking. She was not a small woman. Um, although I don't think it would have mattered what size you were, uh, but she was just walking and the grate had not been put on correctly. Can you tell where this is going? One leg went in. It was large enough around, so that leg went all the way in. So this is one of the stories, one of two that freaked me out. The needless to say, she did a split um, in a way that was, if you were a gymnast, would have been fine. You know, if you had been warmed up and and stretched a lot, but um, so. That kind of stretching on a sidewalk and then landing, you land on parts in between. So I got to read all of the medical records about girl parts and um, the trauma that happened there and the surgeries that then had to happen there because I had to document all of the procedures and everything like that and all the treatment. And it was just horrible. I mean, just no matter whose parts it would have been, it was, it was actually, just absolutely just horrific that she went through this and it was literally years of this and it was who pays for all her medicals this was before Obamacare so um you know she didn't have insurance because she wasn't well she did have insurance but she didn't have that much insurance so then there was this question about, you know, who pays for it? The city because, or is it the water department or who owns the water department and physical therapy because she also tore um, a bunch of ligaments and stuff or whatever they are in that. I don't remember, it's, it's, this was quite a long time ago now. But what I do remember are the pictures of the injuries. Yes, a gay man does not need to see pictures of that and the surgeries and things, but I needed to document it. Um, in order to put in claims and to um, to help this woman pay medical charges and take you know it where it needed to go in order to try to not be destitute for the rest of her life because somebody didn't put the cover back on a water main. She should be able to walk along the sidewalk. Um, so. I ended, think it ended up being a suit against, as you can tell, I blocked a lot of it out. Um, it was just really, it was very, very difficult. And I mean, I just, that woman was a trooper and in that she just was able to weather it all and go through it. She's just, just an amazing lady. So anyway, so that was one, one thing where, so anytime I saw Waterman, I was like, ah! Um, cause you know, suddenly all these, it's like PTSD almost, you know, or whatever they're calling it now, um, where, you know, suddenly you have this, like these images came to my mind of, oh my God, this is what can happen to you. And, you know, if I fell, what would happen to my body though, you know, that section of my body and how would I, what would I tear and all of that? <sighs> anyway, so there's one traumatic thing. I hope I'm not traumatizing as I'm telling you this, at least you didn't have to see the records and go through the photos and read all the doctor's reports. Poor doctors, I just can't imagine how you do this it, and like survive mentally. Um, so that was one. And then another case was actually a um, accidental death of, well, we had two. Um, one of them didn't go anywhere because they ended up not pursuing it. But uh, from falling through city gates, uh, city um, grates. One of them was in Boston. The woman stepped on the grate. It hadn't been put back correctly. She fell, a bunch of pipes underneath. She fell into the pipes, got stuck in the pipes and then fell down. And there was, guess what runs underneath your um, city blocks? Yeah. So she got cut into multiple pieces. 
as the train that was going underneath ran over her because she was on the tracks um, after she was dislodged from the pipes that she had gotten stuck in first on her way down. So needless to say, every time I see it, my stomach turns when I see grates. So not when I just see them, but when I see them under and they're about to be underfoot. So I avoid them. So I walk like this down cities, city um, sidewalks. <laughs> and when I'm with people, it's kind of crazy because I literally walk like that. I, I, but I'm pretty aggressive about like going around, right? And it's a psychological thing that I really should be over by now. But um, I'm not really walking around cities that much anymore. Uh, so it's come back. Whereas I was getting better about it. Like I'd walk on small ones and things like that. Well, yeah, no. San Francisco was full-blown freak out mind of walking on city grates. Um, Shanine, actually, and I, we were walking with Trent one time in... It was either Boston or New York. I'm thinking it was probably New York in the city. And um, she didn't know that I had this, this weirdness about it. And um, so we're walking along and I was avoiding, avoiding. And then there was one where I just stopped because there was, you know, there were so many people around me that I couldn't walk around it. And it took up three quarters, if not more, of the actual sidewalk. So I'm just, you know, I'm sitting there like frozen. And she's like, what's going on? And... I was just like, I, I can't walk over the grate. And she was just like, oh, ha, ha, ha. I was like, no, no, seriously, I can't actually walk over the grate. And Lee was just like, oh, yeah, he has this this thing. And, you know, when you're not in it, it's it's easy to, like, just kind of go, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. Just walk over the grate. So Trent went to push me. And I was like, you know, he's just like, just walk over it. Totally innocent. Totally innocent thing to do. And, um... <laughs> of course, I had like a little <laughs> moment and I was like freaking out. I'm just like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I know what's wrong with me. But it's like this little neuro neurotic moment. Um, so San Francisco was great, except for the greats were not great to walk around. But uh, it's a fabulous city to walk around. It was so much fun. All right. So I've got the angled tips are now orange. Let me show you this up closer. I like and it's hard to see so I'm gonna continue with that maybe even get darker at the bases I don't know I don't want it to become not <laughs> of his head I don't know how to say that um, I may use like a I don't know we'll see but anyway so that orange is good to go I'm gonna do the tips of the rest of these now and because I can, and I have a lot of the orange paint out, and I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to continue putting the orange on here. Now, I've got the orange paint. Where else can I use it on here? Because the yellow is good with the red, and in between red and yellow is orange. So maybe instead of putting it on here, oh, you know what I can do is I can do face. Let's do face stuff. This is getting too tight. Oh, I keep on turning it down by turning it. There we go. Tighten that back up a little bit. Let's use the orange as a highlight on the red. Let's let's shift here. See what I can do. Let's get a nice fine line. And I'm going to start on the back because it's more forgiving, right? Yes. It's a good place to start. And I'm going to just go down the centers. Oh yeah, already I like it. Not too much paint. It doesn't need to be totally solid, but what I want to do is I make want to make it sort of like a highlight of the top of the red. I think I'm just gonna use the very tip. No, that spreads out. That does not work well. Oh, there we go. I'll put it on heavy and then really light down through it. Some places heavy, and then other places really light. There we go. That's cool. Yeah, that works. Let's do it from here. Oh, hard to see. Let's get better lighting on there. There we go. Do, 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 do. Put it in there. 
flipping it around, single line, right down the center, different thicknesses, not worrying about it. Different pressure will be in different thicknesses. And I'm gonna let it just sort of do its own thing as I go around. Now, this these big ones, I'm gonna do multiple lines along them. That's cool. I just made that up. It seems to actually work very well. I'm gonna get in here for this line, really highlight that one. That works well. Got a little gloppy at the end, don't really care. Uh, let's bring it in here. Yep. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna increase the visibility too of the lines, which is pretty cool, which I like. See, that one got a little wacky and very heavy. Let's lighten that up, up through here. Do, do, do. There we go. There. Highlighting the centers. And I'm going to take, in a future episode, I will take and go on one side with a darker red. There we go. Try to steady my hand a little bit. My pinky. That's better. So it sort of helps my pressure not to be too much. Okay. I don't want it to be orange, I want it to be red with, with an orange highlight. Okay, and then bring it there. A little bit more paint on here, get wetter. Just make that line more defined there. Bring another line in the middle, and then a line, another line at the end. That works very well. Bring that down and around. There we go. Yeah, so my neurosis for um, not stepping on grates, I don't know if anybody else has that. Um, I'm sure there are people, that God knows there are people out there, or has something similar, um, where it's like, totally, I know it's totally irrational. I, I really do. I mean, I, I understand that it's like, not something I should play into, and something I could definitely overcome. I understand that, and I know that truly that it is not, it's not debilitating to me. If I needed to walk over a damn grate, I could walk over a damn grate, right? But in the moment, I have that initial <gasps> moment. And it is just so not like me to have those <gasps> moments like of, holy crap, this is stopping me in my tracks. So it's that, I think, that little reaction that I have that is so foreign to me or oh, so unrecognizable until it happens. Because I just don't normally have those. Um, that I, um, <laughs> I think that's actually what, what feeds it. It's kind of like, all right, ooh, irrational. And then I go, ooh, that was irrational. Why was that irrational? And then I just get in my head. It's very funny. I mean, I, I find it very amusing and very wacky and, and so, I was like, all right, so <laughs> during the trip, I was like, all right, so maybe this is the time when I decide that I'm gonna work on this, you know? And I'm like, so maybe I should just, I should walk on every single grate and just hold my breath or not hold my breath. Cause that's what I tend to do is I tend to catch my breath and then like hold my breath as I'm going around or until I've seen that, you know, I have a really clear path. Like I said, not making any sense, but it is what I do. And um, I'm observing myself doing this, which is the funniest part, because I'm actually self-aware as I'm doing it, except for the initial <gasps> moment. There we go. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. See how it's doing that? So I was like, all right, the debate in my head was at one point during one of our walks, I'm like, okay, this may be a good opportunity since I'm surrounded or faced with constant greats for me to just work on this and get over this and because I know I can get over it if I just put my mind to it and reset the brain along there and um, especially when you have opportunities to experience something over and over and over again and not have a trauma happen um, it's you know one way of approaching that sort of thing and just going all right so 
I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm safe, yada yada, and I'm gonna walk on the damn grave. And then I was like, you know what, screw that. <laughs> I was like, I'm on vacation. I'm in San Francisco for the first time. I'm not gonna freaking work on my own neuroses while I'm here. And I'm like, get out of your own freaking head, Patrick, and just let it happen. Good Lord, why do you need to be working on yourself all the time? And I was like, oh, thank you. So part of my psyche was like, oh, thank you for giving me permission just to just to react and not overthink it and not try to fix it today. Good Lord, just let it be. And um, it was so funny because I was so stressed about it at first. And then I was like, nah, OK, this is just what I'm doing. And I'm just going to let it happen. And um, I was less freaked out because I wasn't fighting myself, I think, so much on it. But I also was less freaked out. Um, because I wasn't like um, worried about it as much, so it's just kind of funny. I was, I was like, "Geez, this is quite the, quite the thing to be working on while you're on vacation in this fabulous city for the first time." <laughs> now, now is not the time for self betterment. Uh, I'm all about you know taking opportunities where they're afforded, but that was not one of them that I was, I was really gonna lean into <laughs> but yeah so i'm sure you have your neuroses that you you um sit there and go that is completely irrational right why do i do that or why does that trigger me and i'm not a big fan of the word trigger uh or the term or the concept about oh he's been triggered i'm triggered by this i'm triggered by that i think it's become really like you know one of those 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 words you know that they lose meaning because they're used so much for so many different references that they just lose all their impact but every once in a while it's the right word for something that happens and that for me is definitely being triggered because it's like something you know you look up the term and it's hard because it, it does have a lot of meanings to it on different levels and my whole thing is when you in this case that's what it feels like it's like something is going to click on me and it's it's a very unpleasant thing experience to have so i'm almost done here let's just crank this out for the last part of this video coming right around the lip oops i'm gonna come around the inside of the lip with this I don't want too much around the lips. Oh, but that is pretty freaking cool. I like you. Rub off the excess. Looks good to me. Come around the chin strap, if you will. Do, 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 do. What I like is that this is kind of rough in that it's not consistent and like not worrying about it. it has to be a line, perfect line down the center, but it's thicker here, thinner there heavier here, lighter there, and then right at the lip. I'm going to come right down the center. Ooh, there we go. Cool. Right at the underside of the nose. And I've got just a few more lines to do over on time, but I want to get this done because I don't want to jump in on this and have to finish this up in the next episode. So here we go. And then what I'm looking forward to is these lines. I'm going to go, ugh, don't like that. That actually was kind of cool. If I put it on and then wipe it off, it leaves it around the edges. Ooh, I just discovered something new. This is actually pretty freaking cool. Look at this. My big old shaky hands. Put it on weird. There we go. And what happened was that I put it on too heavy and went on both sides. So if I draw it down, it leaves it on the sides, but the red comes out in the front. Oh, I like that. That is cool. Ooh, I like that. So I'm going to do the other side and then I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Uh, do not go too heavy. Come on. Keep the concept going, Patrick. 
and then I'll just on the top edge over the eye, get a little bit heavier. A little highlighting over the eye. Oh, that's cool, I like that. Yes. Come right in around on the red. Underneath the eye. There we go, tie that all together. That's cool. I like, I like, I like. Now I'm gonna go heavy on the way down. I'm gonna drag that down and it's gonna stay on the sides of it. Just sort of gloop it on, yes, that's what I want. That is really cool. Go over it and drag it off. My finger works beautifully for that. Look at that. That I like. Take a little bit more so the red shines through. There we go. And, oh, I almost missed this side. You were probably like, Patrick, don't forget that side. Gotta make it even. Come on the top side of it. I'm out of paint. There we go. I'm like dragging the brush and nothing's happening. Go right down the top of the nose. Let's do that on this side. I'm going to come on the top side of the red. And oh, I kind of like that effect down here too. Let's do that again. Get on the black, rub it off the black, but it stays in the crevice between the black and the red. Oh yes, I like. There we go, up the bottom. Gonna highlight the bottom of the nose. So, ow, I don't like that. Looks like a clown. That is the problem with this, is I don't want it to look like a clown. There we go. All right, so let me show you that up close and then I'll sign off. So this is what we worked on today. Oops, can you see? There we go, that's better lighting. So that's pretty cool, yeah? The lines are those yellow lines. You see, this lighting's terrible. There we go. And work my way around. Those spikies, the orange tips. Those will be very cool. There we go. All right. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope you have a wonderful day and put more love out there in, into the world. There's not enough love in the world. Thank you, Sir Alan and John. And I hope you give yourself lots of room, give you lots of, yourself lots of space. I apologize for the length of this one. Share, like, subscribe, watch it on fast forward with the closed captions on, and just give yourself lots of space. In, hand out, and then react, and then respond. All right, have a great one. Bye.